I think, I mean, just to, well, I mean, colonization or occupation, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not only about the aggression, but it's also about this occupation of space <coughs> and time. And space and time is, space is the land and the spaces, but time uh, is related to memories and archives. And they control our memories by by keeping keeping a hand a grip on, on this memory. So there is a whole history of, of booting archives and keeping from the <coughs> 48 to today. And obviously, when they give us a, a bit of access to the archive, it's just a, 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 a sign a gesture of kindness from the occupier toward. Uh, so the action the action of saying that. I don't care about the archives you have, that I go around and I will build my archive. It's a sign of vitality and resistance. And the setup, I think, of, uh, of the whole Oslo period, that everything goes through the occupier, through Israel. Goods, banking, also memory. And it was inaccessible in many ways. That's why even the previous film and this film was all finding the spots of, of archives from somewhere else. I would not go, I would not be in Ramallah asking uh, for the Israelis to give us back our memory. I would go around and collect the pieces of this memory and put them together, even if it's not complete. But I have the right to speculate. And, and uh, it's like... <laughs> You said about archiving and filmmaking as well. I don't see this material, these films, as archives. They are, uh, they are films, and they 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 can become archived until liberation, until the moment of victory, let's say. And until now, we are seeing them as an evidence. They are an evidence. They are language, and they are politics that we are learning from. Usually archives, we, we go to them in order to understand our present. But this is our present, and somehow. So the, I mean, I, mean I, I, I had that sense from before, but seriously, after 7 October, it was like, no, we can't. I mean, this is a, a repetition, another repetition, another cycle, that even in, in Qunaitra, it happened. In, in, 48 it happened in all of the historical Palestine. So there, there's an impossibility of looking at this material as archive. And actually, maybe it's a kind of uh, a problem to call them archive because it's uh, setting up that the, the conflict, that the war, the aggression is not a conflict, it's the, the occupation is over. And that we have the freedom of creating our archive. It's, uh, I mean, this is in. It's hard really to think when you're under attack. And uh, I'm, I'm in contact with several filmmakers and we all talk about things and we want to do things. And, but we can't move without having a, a ceasefire, for example. We need time. It's, uh, it's too tough, especially for if you have, uh, I mean, no, uh, this is what's also another thing that this moment unified many of the filmmakers from different backgrounds, that the pain, you feel like, yeah, friends, uh, Palestinians, uh, lives in Dubai who are from Haifa is calling, people from Ramallah are calling. Uh, in Gaza, they're also, we are all together also speaking. I mean, I met uh, more Palestinian from Gaza filmmakers in the last seven months, much more than the last 40 years. So it's like, you know, coming, coming out and uh, looking to somehow unify or co coordinate or because there is a, a, a disbelief in the, in the system of production and producing narratives. It's been too much in control of Western, Western money. And it's been too much directed, like all of the films we've been doing in the last 20 years that has been a lot of money that came into it didn't really manage to prevent one's life death and didn't manage to change uh, a perspective uh, uh, in a way that is effective. Of course, it, it changes 
perspective, but it's not effective. How I feel like we Palestinian filmmakers, intellectuals, uh, researchers, we failed. But and I said that in the panel before, and I feel the resentment of, of this failure, that we have to rethink our methods of, of, of approaching, of distribution, of making films in total. And these films, the period I, we, I work with, gives an example. It's not that it's uh, we want to make militant cinema. We don't want to make it. A, it's a form that was made in a certain way. But I, I mean, OK. <laughs> there is, uh, it's enough. I mean, there is, there is no space for uh, narratives that are not clear toward uh, liberation. I, I, I mean, I'm trying all the time to go away from this, but it's becoming more and more that we have to address the issue in the face. And we can't be apologetical, and we can't be hiding and changing our narrative because it doesn't fit with the Western context, or it doesn't fit with the German uh, uh, memory problem, or, or whatever they are facing. It's their problem, their issue. If they don't want to give us money, we have to open other sources of money, not to change our narratives in order to be apologetic for. Uh, and I, I know that many filmmakers, many many filmmakers, are, are thinking the same way. That they uh, that to put efforts that we become back of part of this community because the community, the Palestinian community, has been fragmented in the last 20 years more than the last whole 100 years. That because of this whole uh, difference, dif difference in financing, different orientation, uh, the, the, it worked out this whole separation between Gaza, West Bank, inside, outside. And the, the role and the mission is, as filmmakers, as image producers, is to build up the bridges, to know each other and not to stop addressing also the outside as much we need to address uh, our the people, our people, uh, in many ways. I feel too much uh, distance from that today. And it's a very uh, sad feeling that I've been all the time looking at festivals, Toronto, I don't know what, all of this kind of things, and never been looking at, okay, what is the voice, real voice back there? and also to communicate different voices and different images of different people, uh, different communities of the Palestinian uh, origins. I can't give a solution at the end of the day, but what the only thing I can do now is that these films and the films from Off-Frame are available, they're being circulating, and they are example of, of something that we need to learn from and build on. Uh, I, I, I went to London to study international like history of cinema. That's where I realized that we have our own history that we uh, don't have access to. We need to, to build on this. Because occupation also always works on the cutting, not the accumulation. It's uh, Palestine, Japan. When you take to somewhere in the street, they're really like, they are the opposite side of the world. But still, <coughs> that happens. And that makes anyone who knows about this a bit to think, what do I have in my home back? What is there in, in, uh, in, in Marseille? What is there in Madrid? What is there in Rabat? What is there in all around the world of, of this evidence of uh, this community that you talked about? Now, to study this community, uh, it was a mix between progressive filmmaking and political parties. Today, we, have, we don't have the political parties that organize and mobilize to create this community, and we don't have the progressive filmmaking uh, tools. Uh, the industry is not set. The industry, the film industry that we know, uh, that a young person will go look for opportunities, he will not access the co this community. He will access the... Um, the film industry that is really built after the, the fall of the Berlin Wall, how to include the, the East, how to include the South, how to uh, tranquilize them and control the narratives. And that's what is the co-production 
meat in, in, in many ways. And there is no, at that time, there is no word co-production. There is no co-production. You don't share uh, uh, rights on, on political issues. We support you in making the thing. And uh, I, make, I make the film, I translate it, you show it to your community uh, in order to learn, not in order to entertain. So there's little shifts that needs that we need to relearn. Re we think maybe in our, I mean, we take that for granted. But if you see how film is being taught in film schools, it's horrific. They only make people come out as tools, like technicians. That's what is the film uh, film industry today. And unless somebody who manages to find something interesting to, to divert a bit, but that's not the common case. How to make this the common case? Now, the idea that we have to come together, I think we have to, otherwise we will disappear. We are fighting against our disappearance, again. And this event, this, this war, this genocide now, uh, it's, it's just a reminder that if we don't Put, pull our stuff together, they will, they're continuing. West Bank is the next, it's, 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 it's there. So we are, we are being challenged now. We are being like, this is the, the challenge in front of, not filmmakers, who cares about filmmakers, but about people, the whole community. And filmmakers are part, they're either part of this community or not. When films, the film speaks to that community. Like uh, 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 Scenes of Occupation from Gaza, one of the films that are there, Mustafa Mali. It's, it's there. It's, it, when you see it, when people see it, they, they, they get inspired. You know, what, where is the language of resistance, how to build it? Not only uh, uh, verbally, but also cinematically. And of course, other of these films like uh, Kufr Shuba, where we are hearing Kufr Shuba today, being attacked by the Israelis and they're like, uh, the fights are happening there. One, the film of Kufr Shuba by Samir Nimr, it's being filmed in Kufr Shuba and talks about the collaboration between the progressive Lebanese and the Palestinian uh, fighters in building not resistance only, but a community around the resistance. I think that's, that's what it's talking about, that the film is, is a key, uh, the, again, I say that in the, from the previous film, but also this film, uh, the important part of the film is the credits, where if you see it, you stop, you can have a keyword to do research and open the world that you need to know. That's more important for me, for, for the community, to give access for these films. Uh, other important thing for me is that you know, to extend the history of, or the, the, the history of this, these films, the filmography, for another generation. I don't know why I felt that I came in between the two generations, a bit younger than me, but I also met Mustafa Abu Ali, I met many of these filmmakers as well, and I felt the responsibility that to, ex to yeah, to, somebody has to bring it for the other. So it's not about what I think really, these films or what my own narratives or all of this thing. I, I come from an art background, I make dance films, I, I do other things. But for this thing, it's just like, yeah, there is a certain responsibility that has to go and it become, uh, to, to, to initiate a, a source of research, research, a place where other people can open up researches. I mean, I didn't want to make perfect narratives. I'm not telling that story. No, no, no. Just, I'm just using the funding that is available for me to scan, digitize, put the films available, and make an inventory. I'm a mechanical engineer originally, so I don't really think in, in, in poetics, and, you know, but I think in structures. <laughs>